place. The rule of law depends on the independence of such institutions and go a long way to anchor the caliber of business that makes Kenya a compelling investment destination. I am confident that we shall make further progress steadily going forward. Kenya alone is an economy of around 55 million people who consume plenty of products from the EU. We remain uniquely geostrategic as the gateway to the East and Central Africa and are a central player in three overlapping regional economic communities, the East African community, the common markets for Eastern Southern Africa, and the Africa continental free trade area. We are also a strong participant in the vast tripartite agreement encompassing ESC, COMESA, and SADC, as you've heard from Moses. This is an agreement, the tripartite agreement was signed in 2015, and unfortunately for the last seven years or so, we haven't concluded that, uh, that agreement to uh, the satisfaction of the requirements of the regulations. In the last one and a half months, I have sent Moses, my cabinet secretary, to 11 capitals, and he's been all the way to Egypt, Angola, Comoros, Uganda, Tanzania, Lesotho, South Africa, and I now can promise with confidence that by end of April, we will have the tripartite agreement in place. And And 28 countries in our continent will be working as one trading block with 750 million people and an economy of $1.8 trillion. I think it is a great opportunity that as the EU looks at Kenya, you are also looking at the tripartite agreement, 750 million people and a huge economy to deal with. I think we can now have a conversation of equals. <laughs> For the EU Business Council, I want to state that doing business in Kenya is strategic and highly beneficial, literally in every way. This is why it is also important that the EU undertake a fresh push to conclude the economic partnership agreement with East African community. And I'm really looking forward to this being concluded so that we can even the scales. Access to the EU market would enable Kenya expand its export base, thereby multiplying employment opportunities and strengthening its balance of trade. It is one of the notable interventions that can make tremendous difference to our economic performance and there is excellent reason in the EU's best interest to conclude this deal. Kenya is undergoing the adverse impact of climate change, leading to extreme weather patterns, including, <coughs> sorry, including a drought in our arid and semi-arid rangelands which covers nearly 70% of our landmass. In these northern and northeastern stretches, rain has failed for four consecutive seasons, leading to widespread crop failure, livestock deaths, starvation, and malnutrition, water stress, immense economic loss, and conflict. This adversity is part of a broader phenomenon afflicting the Horn of Africa, which we all know. Our agriculture-driven economic transformation agenda, industrialization, food security, wealth and job creation is in jeopardy if we remain vulnerable to erratic rain patterns. Thus, this agenda not only has to be complemented by a strong water harvesting and supply and irrigation infrastructure component, our entire bottom-up economic transformation agenda must be premised on strong green growth. Let me repeat, strong green growth. <laughs>